Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. The Vatican Press Office said July 22nd that Cardinal Peter Turkson, prefect of the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, and Cardinal Mario Zanari, Apostolic Nuncio to Syria, met with Syrian President Bashar Assad in Damascus. During the meeting, Cardinal Turkson gave the president a letter from Pope Francis, which urged Assad to put an end to his country's eight-year-long conflict and seek reconciliation for the good of the nation and its vulnerable people. Pope Francis has written to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. This is because he is concerned about the humanitarian situation of the civilian population. The letter was hand-delivered to him by two colonels, Peter Turkson and the current nuncio in Damascus, Mario Zanari. The content of the letter has not been revealed. However, it is known the Pope denounces the harsh conditions for the population in Idlib. Out of its 3 million inhabitants, 1.3 million have had to flee to refugee camps like this one. It is the al Hol camp in the northeast of the country. There, UNICEF reports 90% of the population are women and children, and it is difficult to get humanitarian aid to them. In his letter, Pope Francis proposes to Assad concrete gestures to reconcile the country. These are to provide conditions for the safe return of displaced persons and exiles, the release of tens of thousands of political prisoners, and relatives of detainees be informed about their situation. He also asks him to protect the lives of civilians, schools and hospitals. During these more than eight years of conflict, the Holy See has insisted on the need to seek a viable political solution to put an end to the conflict and overcome partisan interests. Looking now at news from around the country, Pope Francis announced sanctions last week on former Bishop Michael J. Bransfield of the Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston. The sanctions imposed on the bishop are that he can no longer reside in the Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston, nor participate anywhere in any public celebration of the liturgy, and that he has an obligation to make amends for some of the harm he caused. Baltimore Archbishop William Laurie, who was appointed as Apostolic Administrator of the statewide diocese after Bishop Bransfield stepped down, announced in June that a group of lay investigators concluded the claims of excessive and inappropriate spending, along with accusations of sexual misconduct by Bransfield toward adults, were credible. The Vatican referenced this investigation in its announcement of the sanctions on Bransfield. Attorney General Patrick Morrissey called the move by the Vatican a first step, but more, he said, needs to be made public, including the complete Bransfield report and any other relevant materials. More news from around the country in an event titled Catholic Day of Action for Immigrant Children. A few hundred Catholic activists gathered at the foot of the U.S. Capitol at the end of last week, urging politicians to stop its inhumane treatment of immigrant children at the border and reminding people of faith to take a stronger stand against current U.S. border policies. The event was organized by the groups Faith in Public Life and Faith in Action. Lord have mercy. I'm here with Catholic social justice leaders from around the country to draw attention to the moral crisis at the border. Immigrant kids deserve to be with their families, not in cages. And we're here to send a very clear moral message to President Trump and this administration that the detention of children must end. Lord have mercy. When you hear about this terrible situation of kids being placed in fenced in and caves and it just gets to your heart. And so as a Franciscan, when they said we were going to protest this whole policy on the part of the administration, I just said, well, I have to be there. I mean, if Francis were around, he would be there. That's what our faith calls us to do, is to welcome the stranger. So it couldn't be clearer in the Bible. And at the same time, we have an administration right now that is criminalizing their desperation. So it really, it only makes sense that I would be here on Capitol Hill demanding that Congress stop funding the state-sponsored terrorism and abuse that we're seeing happening, particularly at the border. But the constant threat of raids is also a form of terrorism to these communities. I think as long as our taxpayer dollars are paying for private detention centers to warehouse children for profit, or to pay for unaccountable enforcement agents to tear apart vulnerable families, then we're all complicit. And I'm here, I'm hoping to raise the awareness of Catholics and people of faith that if you see this happening and you're horrified by it, then your faith calls you to respond, to act. And if you 
fail to do that, then you're really failing your faith and your responsibility. The demonstration moved from outside into the Russell Senate office building, where at least 70 men and women, religious and lay Catholics, were arrested for civil disobedience. Those arrested were released later that day after either choosing to pay a fine or request a court date. In news from around the world, the police's criminal investigation and detection group in the Philippines recently filed charges of inciting sedition, cyber libel, libel and obstruction of justice against more than 40 people, including the country's vice president, four Catholic bishops, three priests and several government critics. UCANews.com reported the complaint said they conspired to spread false information against the family of Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte and administration officials. It also said they were looking to agitate the general population into staging mass protests with the possibility of bringing down the president. The president of the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines, Archbishop Romulo Velez, said he knows the church leaders being charged and they are bishops whose sincerity, decency, respectfulness and love for the country and the people are beyond doubt. The chairman of the Public Affairs Office of the Bishops Conference said the move was meant to scare the churchmen and eventually silence them. The charges stem from the release of a video that went viral on several social media platforms early this year that linked Duterte and his family to the illegal drug trade. And finally, in the news, the Vatican has announced that the Pope has elected Matteo Bruni to serve as director of the Vatican Press Office, replacing Alessandro Giazzotti, who had been serving as interim director since December 31st. The 42-year-old Bruni, who was born in England, had previously served as assistant to the director since 2013. He began working in the Vatican Press Office in 2009. The Vatican also announced that the Pope appointed Giazzotti and Sergio Senefante, an Italian journalist at Vatican News, as deputy editorial director of the Dicastery for Communications. Well, that's all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Elson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.